Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Houston Ensemble YouTube channel. We got a big, important episode today. Joe Rogan just had Sanjay Gupta on the podcast, and you know they talk about a lot of important stuff. So I put five clips together that I thought were extremely important, and I'm just going to dive right into them so that you can see them. Let's start with number one. Yeah, so that's so, the move. All right, get, get vaccinated, let it wane, and hang around with a bunch of dirty people. <laughs> okay, well, I, I, I didn't get a lot of therapeutics on hand, so you can take care of it quickly. <laughs> I will see your recommendation. And, do it? and give you one. Should you come out with us last night? You probably would have thought it. <laughs> I almost did. Yeah. Now, I know, now I know what your secret plan was. No, but, but, but what? But uh, so, so for you, Joe Rogan. Yes. I would say you've had it. Yes. To not get one shot of the vaccine. No. Why not? Because I have better immunity than I would if I was vaccinated. We, so, right? Yes. Don't I? I think your immunity is really good. So why, if I've already gotten through COVID and I was really only sick for a day, and then five days later I was negative, I, and I do have the natural antibodies now, why would I take a chance in getting vaccinated on top of that? By the way, I'm glad you're, you're, you're better. Thank I'm glad you. it only lasted a day. You're probably the only one at CNN that's glad. No, 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 no. Not. The rest of them are all lying about me taking horse medication. <laughs> and we should talk about that. That bothered you. It should bother you too. I They're lying I... at your network about people taking human drugs versus drugs from veterinary. Calling it a horse dewormer is not a flattering thing. I get it's that. It's a lie. It's a lie on a news network, it, and it's it, a lie that's a willing. That's that's a lie that they're conscious of. It's not a mistake. Yeah, they're unfavorably framing it as a veterinary medicine. Well, the FDA put this thing out. You saw that. Did you see the thing that the FDA put out? What did the FDA put out? <laughs> it was a tweet. It was snarky. I admit it. They said you are not a horse. You are not a cow. Stop taking this stuff. Or something like Why that. Why would you say that when you're talking about a drug that's been given out to billions and billions of people? A drug that was responsible for one of the inventors of it making the Nobel Prize. Prize. Nobel Prize in 2015. 15, yeah. yeah, yeah. A, a well, drug that's been shown to stop viral replication in vitro. You know that, right? I, I, Why would they lie and say that's horse dewormer? I can afford people medicine, motherfucker. <laughs> this is ridiculous. It's just a lot of anyone is thick. But don't you think that a lie like that is dangerous on a news network when you know that they know they're lying? You know that they know that I took medicine. Like, here it is. This is everything. You got it right you. here. Somebody gave it to me. All right, hang on. I, I, do you, the thing is, like, we're, we're, we're like going so fast. Like, I feel like I'm missing. I'm missing. So you think I that that's a problem? That your news network was not, lies? Well, I don't. I don't Dude. Think. What did they say? They lied. What did they say? I was taking horse dewormer. First of all, it was prescribed to me by a doctor. Yeah, yeah. Along they with shouldn't have said a bunch was, of if, other if medications. Was, if you got a human pill because there were people that were taking it, the veterinary medication, and I, you're not, obviously. You got it from a doctor, so that it should be called that. Ivermectin can be a very effective medication for parasitic disease. And as you say, it's probably, you know, I think, what, a quarter billion people have taken it around the world? I more, get that. Way more. So, way what, more. Can, Billions of people have taken it. Can, can I just come back to the one? I want to talk about I, No, two, no, no. You have, before we get to that, does it bother you that the news network you work for out and out? Lied. Well, outright lied about me taking horse dewormer. They, they, they shouldn't have said that. Why did they do that? I don't know. You didn't ask? I didn't think that was I right. You're the medical guy over there. I didn't ask. I should have asked before but they did. It was the lead. No, yes, Joe. I, I watched. They, I watched. I watched. You watched. No, I don't think there's yes, a lead. I don't. I, no one takes. Joe says yes, take, taking watch livestock this. drug despite warnings. Yeah. Jamie had to pull this up. You want to play it? Does she, does she this is your news network. I'm going to watch. Let's see. I'm going to watch. Rogan telling his 13 million Instagram followers that he was treated with several drugs, and he included ivermectin on the list, a drug used for livestock. The FDA and the CDC warned against using to treat COVID. Turns out I got COVID. Look, they put so a yellow filter on me too. The <laughs> oh, they did. <laughs> it's monocle, you see the, the original bodies, video uh, versus like shit there. Real quick, they literally put a filter on him to make him look more sick. Do you know that? I think you look good. Pause. 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 It's enough. Fred is on. I don't That's think enough, Jim. I don't but, think Aaron had glee. Oh uh, well, it's more Brian Stelter was the gleeful one. But the, the point is, that's a lie. It can be used for humans. I, I get it. I, it not totally... just could be used for humans. Is often used for humans along with all the other drugs I took. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I, you know, I appreciate that Sanjay Gupta. I really appreciate that he actually came onto the show because that's huge. Like we're not when the people who are in these super high up positions at CNN in the NIH, blah 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 blah. They're usually scared to come on to his podcast. And so we don't get the discussions that actually really need to happen. Like we should have freaking Anthony Fauci on Joe's podcast so that they can have that three hour nuanced conversation. I've watched all the podcasts now because this is extremely important to listen to. So I urge everybody to listen to it. But, you know, basically Joe is just being as honest as possible. He said they lied and Sanjay gets that. Obviously, he can't admit to it as hard as we would like him to because he is the CNN correspondent. He is CNN as well. But, you know, it's just so obvious at this point that there really is no backtracking. Let's go to the second clip. Is that a possible reaction for some of these, like, very rare instances where people have these uh, horrific side effects? It could be. There was a study that just came out basically saying, you know, frankly, reminding people 
that when you inject, you should aspirate. You got to aspirate a little bit, yeah. so you don't get blood back, and yeah. and, uh, and then be able to to inject directly into the muscle. Is there a specific site that's more conducive to a straight muscle than to, to hitting a, a vein or a blood vessel, or is it just dumb luck? Um, you know, when you're injecting into them, you're not, you obviously got big blood vessels around, so obviously right. you have to avoid those. Within the muscle itself, you may have smaller blood vessels, small veins, small capillaries. And so is it just luck whether or not the vaccine gets into those? Into the blood vessel? Yes. I mean, that would be bad if it, if it got into those. So, you know, you, that you're supposed to aspirate a little bit to not have that happen. It's unusual for it to happen, but I think that there might be something to that. There's a study that just came out, I think, over the last couple of days showing that there may be some concerns about more adverse effects in people who had it injected directly into their bloodstream. Yeah. I mean, it just makes sense, right? Because that study on the spike protein um, that they did at the Salk Institute, I'm yeah. sure you're aware yep. of that. Yep. They showed the spike protein is responsible for the deterioration of blood vessels. Yeah. That, that, that this is, I mean, the Salk, and they were the same ones who, who then think, classify this potentially as a vascular yes. disease. So with that one, this is something that I didn't even realize that there is the potential that if you do not aspirate the arm when injecting, you have the potential that you're going to inject it right into the bloodstream and that is going to cause a problem. And I was not aware of that actually until this. I had heard something about it, but the fact that Sanjay is bringing this up and admitting that this is a possible problem and that's another reason why we're seeing so many adverse reactions because people aren't being injected properly that's humongous i mean it's just a cause for concern that needs to be addressed and should not be shunned okay let's go to clip number three well, lack of vitamin supplementation and exercise and uh, just a, a robust immune system and just a person who's eating poorly, sedentary lifestyle. Like what is causing their body to have this sort of reaction where some people get through it quite easily. Mm. Young people, yeah. get it, like my children, yeah. my children got through it. It was like the worst was like, it was like a day. And my other one had a headache for a day. I, and I, and I you know, think I think most people are that way, right? Yeah. And when I say most, I mean, you know, even among adults, 80%. Right. So should we be making decisions based on the small amount of people that have these long-term sy symptoms and not instead addressing why do these individuals have these long-term symptoms? And is this something that's inherent to their own biology, their own lifestyle choices? Is that what the consequences are coming from? Or is it coming from this very serious disease? Like, shouldn't we look at it in terms of what does this do to healthy people? Mm -hmm. And if these people are not healthy, what can we do to make them healthy so they can have a more robust immune system and a more, uh, you know, a more favorable outcome? I, instead of just thinking we should vaccinate kids, well, I mean, all kids. Why can't we do both? Because I'm worried. Because I'm worried because I know I, I, one of my friends, his good friend he grew up with, his daughter was 14 years old, got vaccinated and had to be admitted to the ICU because she was she had some sort of a cardiorespiratory issue from the vaccine. That scares the shit out of me. That scares the shit out of me. I've, I've read a story about a 19-year-old girl who had to get a heart transplant. And because of the vaccine, yes. I'll be fine for you, wind up dying because she had got on immunosuppressant drugs to do with a heart transplant and then got pneumonia. This is a very rare case, very, right? Very rare. But if you're going to bring up anecdotal evidence about people that have long-term fatigue and consequences, you also have to bring up these anecdotal tales of people that have lost friends and loved ones to being vaccinated. Yeah, you're, you're right. I mean, the real those, those are real things. Those, those are terrifying. I mean, no one wants to discuss those. Well, I don't want to pretend that they don't exist. I don't. I don't want to pretend they don't exist. Trust me. I, 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 I did not know about the 19-year-old uh, who, who needed a heart transplant. Yeah, fine, okay, and then they bring up the uh, article regarding that 19-year-old, and this is another thing. I, I think it's extremely important what Joe is saying. We're he, he's basically saying you're cherry picking small evidence to uh, support injecting this to a large number of people that will not be affected in a negative way. And Sanjay, once again, he sees exactly what Joe's saying. This is extremely important. Most people get over it just fine. Joe's kids, me, my friends, etc. A lot, most people. And what they're not doing is promoting good health. They could have been promoting natural remedies along with actual medicine along with man-made medicine for the past two years but they have not been doing that and that is a red flag and joe's bringing that up you know we you take a bunch of vitamins get exercise be outside uh you can even take steroid on top of that and then we have our therapeutic drugs which they've stifled as i said in the last video which is a cause for concern anyway i'm gonna go to the fourth video and, and so he's now telling me that he wants to get vaccinated, but he's worried about his clots. Mm. He's been calling his doctor's office. He hasn't gotten a call back yet. And I'm the first person he has seen since this all happened, first doctor he's seen. And so he asks me, and I tell him. And, you know, am I going to get pissed off at the anti-vaxxers after spending time with that guy? No, I'm not. Because there are some who are going back to the same thing. Some who are just starting to start shit. They're just trying to sow chaos and doubt. And for no good reason, chaos is the, the metric, as you've talked about on your podcast. But this guy, he, he wants to do it. He understands the consequences of not. He just watched what happened to his daughter. He's worried about his stent in his leg. There's all these things. And we've got to communicate that to people. If we're going to ask the country to do something, if you're going to ask the country to get vaccinated, if you're going to ask the country to get boosters, which is the most recent thing, you've got to explain it well. If you're going to ask kids to get vaccinated, why? Why are you asking kids? Because everyone says, well, aren't they far less likely to, to get sick and, and all that? Yes. But here's why they should get vaccinated. Why do you think kids should get vaccinated? Well, I think, I think there's a few reasons. First of all, they young children? Yeah. Like how old? You know, I mean, I think they will probably see a vaccine authorized for five to 11 year olds. Do we have real studies on the impact of young children in COVID in terms of what it, what yeah. it does to their yeah. bodies? 
Uh, we, we know that they're far less likely to get sick. Right. That's for sure. Far uh, less likely to be hospitalized, far less likely, likely to die, yeah. and far less likely to die from COVID than even from the flu, correct? That could be. You know, I mean, flu is, is a concern for sure. 16,000 yeah. people die of flu every year, but it's more dangerous for children than COVID, I, correct? I think when you look at like H, uh, H1N1, you know, the, the, um, that's a different one. Right? It's, that was a bad flu, but I think, you know, like in any given year, I think what, some 500 children die of COVID. In any given year, you know, you may have um, similar numbers of flu. It's, it's, so death rates, yes. I think the children that die from COVID, most of them have pretty extreme comorbidities, though, correct? Yes. And Once again, pure clear clear as day and sanjay doesn't do a great job of immediately answer he's very legalese about his responses as i'm sure he has to be and i'm sure as he was told to be now once again let me just say a disclaimer i i'm really appreciative for how open he was on this podcast i really am thankful for that but like they were just saying it's not a clear-cut issue and we don't have the long-term data that we should have to make such a rash de- make such a rash decision uh, when we know that children are going to recover when we know that the majority of people recover 99.7 and it just it seems like a dangerous move or it seems like a rushed move to put this on to children especially extremely young children that are not at risk and that's for sure okay we're gonna go to the last clip i chose this one because i thought it was funny he actually just started the podcast with this and it just kind of shows you the vibe that's set up right when they start recreational drug that was possibly or probably harmful so and, and say, hey, man, just listen to how I think about these things. I want to hear how you think about it. Listen to how I think about these things. Who would that one person be in the United States? And it was Joe Rogan. Hmm. It was you. How weird. So, well, <laughs> do you, do, does that surprise you? That doesn't surprise <clears throat> it you. It does. It still surprises me. Um, I wanted to have you on, first of all, because I really respected that you made this change of opinion publicly. When you were first talking about marijuana, mm. uh, you were talking about it as if it had no medical benefit and it was really just a recreational drug that was possibly or probably harmful. Is that a, a assessment that you yeah, agree with? I, I, I think it certainly didn't seem to have any medicinal benefit. Right. Yeah. But then upon further examination, you publicly changed your position and, and you in, in doing so, you actually examined all the scientific evidence that pointed to, for many people with uh, diseases, many people that are on chemotherapy, many people with, uh, you know, some serious ailments, mm. marijuana can be very beneficial. Mm-hmm. And you talked about that, and I really admired that because that takes a lot of courage. Because a lot of people, when they um, have an idea and they proclaim it publicly, they double down and they just, they, you know, use confirmation bias and whatever, you know, echo chamber right. news story. Okay, that one, you know, it's just a little bit of a funny backhanded compliment to Sanjay. But, you know, in all honesty, we are grateful that he's a person who can have a viewpoint, examine the data, and then change it. And I think that's one of the most important things that we can do today. Everybody is say, hey, you know what? We thought this at one point, we were presented with more data, now we are more likely to think this. People actually will trust you more when you're open to being wrong slash changing your viewpoint because it shows that they can trust you rather than sticking so hard to your guns the whole time and never actually you know, changing what you think. So it's an extremely good trait to do that. Um, just to wrap up, this was, I think, the at this point, the penultimate podcast for this era of time in the past two years, just because it was clear you have two sides. Not that they're necessarily opposing, but, you know, it was a huge deal when CNN came out, you know, applies a filter to Joe's Instagram post, makes him look sick. They're saying he's using the horse drug. I saw a really funny meme. I uh, I may maybe I'll edit it in. It's the two arms, two giant arms. You got your arm for the left, you got your arm for the right, and the arm for the left says both use horse drugs. The left arm 
uses ketamine, the right arm, says ivermectin. I might edit that in. I just thought that was extremely funny. But all in all, it was an extremely good conversation. Joe was clear, nuanced, and honest, and he kept Sanjay honest. Sanjay was also clear and receptive, and I really appreciated that there wasn't any animosity in the con in the conversation. So I really think that this is how all conversation conversations should be from here on out. Now, the next thing is, let's get James O'Keefe on the podcast. Let's get Anthony Fauci on the podcast. Let's get Francis Collins on the podcast. Let's get Rand Paul on the podcast so that we can actually start having some even more serious discussions. Anyway, if you guys like the video, make sure to like, subscribe. We need you guys here. Or actually, we've been going up a lot in the past few days, so we got a lot of stuff coming forward. And uh, thank you for supporting us. We want to see you soon. It is widely known that the tobacco and diet industries lobby governments with scientific propaganda for years until proven guilty in court. The artificial treatment of our water is the next corporate deception. For example, virtually every nation in Europe has rejected the use of artificial fluoride. International studies since the 40s have repeatedly shown that endocrine and neurological effects increase after repeated consumption, even at the levels accepted by U.S. government. Epic Water Filters is the most thorough industry-grade filtration system that Houston Ensemble has ever used. They reduce heavy metals upward of 99.5% such as lead and mercury, bacteria like E. coli, and poisons like chromium, nitrate, and fluoride. Join us in our journey to living a toxin-free life and get your epic water filter using discount code Houston Ensemble lowercase one word. That's Houston Ensemble lowercase one word for 20% off your epic water filter.